Hello and welcome to the show. I am here today on 4 to 6 with the Audi RS4 event. I am rather a big fan of estate cars and kind of curious to see how this one will fare when it comes to autocross. I do very much like the RS4. However, it is rather large and rather heavy. Not so good for autocross, but it is four wheel drive. Maybe just maybe that will be enough to kind of save it when it comes to uh, going quickly now four drive cars some have been very quick some have struggled with pi this one when it starts off towards the well, it starts off at the, the low end of b class but by the time i put some race tires on which we are going to want most definitely you know it's halfway through b class it might struggle with PI. We will have to wait and see, though. 285s all round. Quite nice, actually, for tyre widths on this car. We will be wanting some aero. And I should think we can get the full weight reduction. Hey, look at that wing. Nice. <laughs> nice, impressive rear wing on the RS4. Uh, we can, As I said, I'm sure we can get the full weight reduction and keep it in A-Class. Indeed, we do. That's 2,931 pounds. Power to weight ratio is unlikely to be the most impressive. In fact, it is probably going to jump up over the £3,000 mark when we put the roll cage in, but we are going to want that. We want the chassis rigidity. We want all of the handling that we can possibly get in this vehicle. And these are dropping the weight out, but this is going to put it back over the three, yeah, just over the £3,000 mark. I'm get it back down again, though fortunately. Uh, not that we are going to swap engines, I'm just kind of curious as what we could do. 5.2 litre V10 or the 4.5 litre V8. Both of them far too high a PI for me to be putting them in this uh, in this vehicle. Not that I particularly uh, want to change the engine in the Audi anyway. Speaking of engines, exhaust always going to be the first thing that I do. You can save a fair amount of weight from that. Um, now, where do we go where do we go next with this car? Let's go and stick the diff in the vehicle. Uh, we are going to want a certain amount of power, certainly, in here. Now, I tend to avoid going for the likes of gear blocks and clutch and all of that. They have huge PI gains, very little in the way of performance gain when you're driving a car with manual clutch like I do. They don't actually make a huge amount of difference, although we will just check sometimes, but it does have the, the first kind of stage upgrade of the gearbox sometimes you go for the street gearbox uh, when you have like a, the normal standard one you actually lose a bit of pi so you can get more parts on that is not the case in here Let's see what else we can do with the engine i mean power to weight ratio is going to be okay it's certainly going to be better than some that we have seen the subaru svx springs to mind that was as heavy if not heavier than this and under 400 horsepower not too bad on the power front. We will go and now try to get the drive line in. Ah, slightly too much. <laughs> These four-wheel drive cars, of course, more drive line to swap out, so they then do tend to have a fairly large uh, weight reduction when you do swap them out. Unfortunately, we can only go for the sport stage. £2,933. As I expected, it's on the heavier side, but it could be a lot worse. We are not too bad for power. Decent tyre widths, and of course that four-wheel drive traction will always be good. So, there is some hope for the big Audi. Now, as ever, to test the RS4, we have come to the Hockenheim circuit, where it will get three runs through the autocross course in an attempt to go as fast as the Lamborghini Miura. Our current leader has a time of 203.3. That is an incredibly quick time, and I suspect the Lamborghini not too worried about the Audi. This RS4, perhaps its main competition, I'm looking at maybe the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. We know that Jeep was absurd for the kind of vehicle it is, a 206.9. Perhaps that is kind of the target we are looking at with the RS4. I could be completely wrong, it could be monumentally fast, or it could struggle. There is uh, one way to find out. I would like the RS4 to go quite quickly here. We shall uh, have to have to hope. Hope that it is good balance. Hope that we can carry good corner speed and that the excess weight isn't too much to deal with. We do get a good start. We have seen some four-wheel drive cars bogging down off the line. That does not look like it is going to be the case with this Audi. Are the brakes good? Actually, yeah. 
pretty solid, getting it slowed down. What is the acceleration like out of that uh, corner? Yeah, it's up to 100 miles an hour. Oh, I've run it a little too wide. That was uh, my bad through there. I was trying to kind of get a good, a good line through that fast corner. It's just too far to the left. However... The actual cornering speed is looking is looking pretty solid. I have got to be wary. A relatively light back end in this car. It is already moving about quite a lot through some of these gates, which is a tad on the scary side. We are flat out, though, through there. 115 miles an hour, perhaps breaking a little bit early. It doesn't feel like a big estate car at all, this. It doesn't feel... Okay, 2,900 pounds is not exactly heavy, per se, but in this particular series, that is quite a lot of weight compared to the small sports cars that have uh, traditionally gone very, very well. This does not feel like ah, turned into soon. Actually got a lot of turning. It doesn't feel though like one of the heavier vehicles. It really is an agile, agile car. I'm getting caught out by the turning in a couple of places already on this run. Oh, I don't have the brakes though to do that. Okay, we can't quite be that brave under braking. We will have to go a little earlier down there. So we have now slowed nicely into the hairpin. I'm liking this car. Although, <laughs> a little bit of understeer. It drifted a, a smidge wide on the exit. Got away with it that time around. Might not be quite so lucky uh, in, <laughs> in future ones. So that is something else to be aware of. Now, how do we fare on this uh, wiggle to the finish line. Yeah, it's not quite up there with perhaps the Renault 5, but that's not surprising really. Not bad though, out of that section. Well, considering there's 15 seconds worth of time penalties in all of that, this Audi is looking like a quick car. So, on to the second run for the RS4. I've got to keep it out of the barrels. That's always good going. The car's got a lot more turning than I'm expecting it to, or I was expecting it to on that first run. That's a good conundrum to have, but uh, yeah, that's something to uh, take into consideration. I've also got to be a little bit wary. It's not as bad as the Audi S1. However, we do have a bit of a, um, a bit of oversteer, perhaps with cold rear tires. It's just a little bit uh, unsettled through the opening gates, but it does soon calm down. That's incredible speed. <laughs> Wasn't quite expecting that to work. Oh, and I've clipped the... Oh, after such an incredible run through that high-speed section, we just brush a gate with the splitter, and uh, that's a little bit of a shame. But I tell you what, that is some incredible turning speed that this car can take. This, this is a sports car. This is better than a lot of the very small lightweight sports cars that have gone around here. It's a big hit where relatively heavy four-wheel drive estate car, and it is getting turned in and carrying just phenomenal speeds through these sections. And of course, being four-wheel drive, we can put all of the uh, 430 horsepower down out of all of these gates, although I have run it in a little too deep there. That was a small mistake from me. We can't quite get it neatly out of that section, and certainly not as neatly as I would like it to be. Now, we are going to have to brake early here. The brakes are pretty solid. Oh, I've done... I've not quite got judging this splitter right at the front. I'm just nicking a couple of gates. That one, I don't know. I didn't I think I saw the barrel ping off in the distance. I think it was just the tiniest of nicks. Careful not to let that understeer get the better of you. It's only a small bit of understeer, but it is enough. That one there was a proper solid whack on the inside one, trying to carry more speed. Seeing as this run is gone, I might as well experiment anyway with uh, what the car can do. There's a few more gates to go for the RS4. I think we may have to be uh, take a slightly different approach through this final section. We can't. I haven't quite got the turning of the Renault 5, so sort of straighten the car up as soon as we can, fire it out of the corner. Again, another three gates clipped on this one, but the RS4, if I can get it right, is looking very fast. So it is on to the final run for the Audi. Could our first estate car go into the top 10? I think it is very, very doable. If I cannot make any mistakes, keep the splitter out of the barrels. It is uh, incredibly easy just to nick one on the way past. So if we can manage to do that, I reckon we could see a very, very good time from this vehicle. It is an incredible 
incredibly fun car to drive this. A lovely, lovely vehicle to race with. How fast are we going to be? Just a little lift. It's 108 miles an hour <laughs> that section. Just the smallest of lifts as we come into it. Don't quite have the confidence to be absolutely flat. But 108 miles an hour through that section is right up there. It's only a couple of miles an hour down on the Muir itself. It's, yeah, that's, that's silly speed through that section. And the Audi is absolutely okay to hold it. It's high 70s through that gate as well. It just gets changed direction so much better than I was expecting it to. Again, under braking now for this next few corners. The only, the only criticism I really have of this car is the brakes could be a tad better. We have had cars with the better at slowing down that will carry a bit more speed and you can brake it a bit later. But that is only a small thing. They're certainly not bad at all. Uh, does feel a little big through that section as well. That is the only place though that it really struggles and has still managed to get it out with plenty of speed. It is a little bit earlier under brakes through here than we have had with some cars. Perhaps a little bit of four wheel drive understeer not helping at that particular turn but it certainly makes up for it with such blistering acceleration out of some of these turns. Now don't end up in that outside barrel is a nasty, nasty section around the hairpin. But we are through it with the Audi absolutely on the limit. You can hear the tyres squealing away as we change direction across the uh, camber. It's quite a nasty camber change. And for cars that have a tendency to oversteer, it can be a little scary. The back of the Audi was a tad light, but nothing too bad. And then it's through this last wiggle, the acceleration towards the line. What's the time going to be? 205.4. <laughs> 205.4 from the RS4. That is a hell of a lap time. <laughs> oh, I like this car. I really like this car. It does not not drive like an Audi, uh, like an Audi estate car that I would expect it to be. It does not drive like one of the heavier cars that we have had around here. Absolutely not. It's got some of the best handling, some of the most sort of predictable handling in many respects, that is one hell of a machine. The only thing that do let it down, you know, the brakes could be slightly more powerful. That's probably to do with the fact, you know, this is a thousand pounds heavier than some of the cars that it's beaten. That's a lot of weight. That is an awful lot of weight when we're talking about an autocross course. So yeah, the brakes are quite as sharp. And the back end with the colder rear tires is a tad loose in a couple of times. It's on the verge. It never has any big sideways moments. There's just a couple of times where it's a little scary pushing the car. It does feel like it could potentially have them. But on the whole, yeah, it does, it does stay together very well. It is a, a great time. That is a great time from the RS4. And it will put it in to fourth place. It uh, doesn't go faster than the Mira. The Focus RS still remains the fastest four-wheel drive car the Renault 5 keeps its third place but the Audi beats the uh, Corvette Z01 the 911 GT3 the 30 M3 the Volkswagen Beetle is beaten along with the RX8 it beats the Lancia Delta as well that is yeah incredible that is a really one of my favorite cars I think that I've taken around the autocross course it is that much fun to drive and it's really easy to drive this car quickly I uh, highly recommend it for, for autocross. Yeah, it's not quite up there with the Mira, perhaps not too surprisingly, but uh, yeah, that is one hell of a car to, uh, to go driving with. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.